That's how fraudulent that hockey stick process was. Now, of course, that doesn't answer the question whether there really was a medieval warm period. Just because the scientists bent the graph to try to say there wasn't doesn't mean there necessarily was. However, once again, if people say to you the IPCC represents a consensus, no, it doesn't. On the question of the medieval warm period, the near unanimous consensus throughout the peer-reviewed literature over the last quarter of a century is that there was a medieval warm period, it was real, it was global, and it was warmer than the present. Here are just a few of them. Susan Solomon, the next uh, little liar. Now this is in the 2006, 2007 IPCC report. This is the temperature data for the last, global temperature for the last 150 years with what I call railroad engineer Pachauri's railroad lines superimposed on it. The intention here is to try to show that the rate of global warming is getting ever worse. Now this is a flagrant example of one of the oldest and naivest statistical abuses in the book. If you take any stochastic data set, then choice of start points and end points will give you more or less any result that you want. And I'll show you this by choosing my own start points and end points. I'm just going to take the same data set, but I'm going to take the last few years, starting in 1993 with my start point on the top left, 97 top right, 2001 bottom left, 2005 <coughs> bottom right. We're heading for an ice age, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a vote. How many people think that the UN got it right with the previous graph? How many people think that I got it right with this one? <laughs> well, I told you not to believe a word I say. <laughs> because, of course, if I'm using the same data set and the same technique and getting a completely opposite result, then there's something wrong with the technique. The technique is bogus. No public authority should ever have used such a technique. Here's the truth. There's the data set with his lordship's purple roads laid upon it. Three roads, and you can see they're in parallel. Because there have been three 60-year cycles during which we've had uh, warming over 20 or 30 years, and each of those warmings has been exactly parallel. Now, in the first two of those periods, we couldn't have had on any analysis, even the UN's, any significant influence. In the third period, theoretically, if the UN is right, we might have had, but yet the rate of warming is identical to that in the two previous periods. There is indeed no anthropogenic signal in the record. But here's another of Susan Solomon's things. She wrote a paper shortly after she had been the lead author of the IPCC's 2007 science section, and she said there's going to be thousands of years of warming in the pipeline even if we stop CO2 rising in the year 2100. So I did some sums. And I took the UN's own formula for the equilibrium warming to 2100, 3.9 Celsius. I looked up what they said the transient warming to that date would be, 3.4 Celsius. So how much warming would there be, even on the UN's exaggerated estimates of the effect of CO2 on temperature, over those next thousands and thousands of years? That Susan Solomon had written and succeeded in publishing a peer-reviewed paper on answer half a degree Celsius. And that's how easy it can be to check the lies that are being told to us by these wretches. Kevin Trenberth, another one whose name appears frequently in these emails, closely involved in the team, they call themselves the team. Here is his attempt in 1997 to tell us what the radiative balance of the Earth is, the Earth's radiation budget. Look at that figure that is circled there. He is assuming that the Stefan Boltzmann radiative transfer equation applies at the surface of the Earth. When I made that assumption in a newspaper article three years ago, I was jumped on by everybody, oh no, no, you have to use the characteristic emission level. But Trenberth uses that one, he uses it again here. Now the difference between these two papers, this is 2008, and the previous one was nine years earlier, 11 years earlier, is that on this one, if you add up all the surface values of incoming and outgoing flux, 
you find it is very, very slightly positive by 0.9 watts per square metre. Now, how many people believe that it can be done to that degree of precision? Of course, it can't. The reason why he redid this is because another member of the team, James Hansen, whom we saw before, he of the 75 metre sea level rise, he had written a paper in 2005 saying that there has to be a radiative imbalance in order to allow warming to take place. And that radiative Im imbalance is 0.85 watts per square metre. So that's what Trendberth then does. They put this entirely fictitious paper together, once again, assuming that the Stefan Boltzmann equation, which is that equation over there, applies exactly at the surface, where the only place it can even in theory apply exactly is in fact at the characteristic emission level about five or six miles up. Then we have Gavin Schmidt. He is a sidekick of Hansen at NASA. He published a stinging attack on me, one of many that he's done, on his rather repellent website, saying that I had incorrectly stated that CO2 concentration was rising at well below the range predicted by the UN. Well, there is the graph for the last 10 years and an inset, the projection of what would happen over the next 100. That's the actual data, the jiggly blue line. The least squares linear regression trend underneath, rather interesting, we're, we're getting a straight line increase in CO2 concentration when the UN predicts an exponential increase. And that was really what was upsetting Gavin Schmidt, because I was the first person to reveal that this is the case, and that this alone requires you to halve all of the forecasts of temperature change that the UN had come up with. But what Schmidt did was he said, oh no, he's got it wrong. In fact, the UN's forecasts coincide exactly with the data. His own members of the team then emailed him, you'll see these emails in the uh, Climate Gate emails, saying, no, no, you can't get away with that. Your graph is bogus and Moncton's is right. Did he correct it? Did he withdraw what he said on the website? No, he did not. Crooks don't do that. Tom Carl, the director of the US National Climatic Data Center, another one intimately linked by these emails with all the others we're talking about here. Now here is a record of temperatures compiled from three separate data sets, one of which happens to be the Hadley Center, over the last few years. And I put this in front of Congress when I was testifying next door to Tom Carl in Washington in the summer. And so astonished were they by this that, that Joe Barton, the ranking minority member, said, just one moment, Mr. Carl, Lord Moncton is telling us there's been nine years global cooling. We have had testifier after testifier <coughs> from various government agencies talking about global warming. Not one of them has told us this. Is Lord Moncton lying to us? And Tom Carl would not admit that I was telling the truth. He flanneled and he evaded and he wriggled and he mimbled. So I was made to write to the committee to justify my position. So I got his global temperature data set and I calculated the least squares linear regression trend on it over the last nine years and there it is. Spot the difference. Even his own data set shows cooling. But he wasn't willing to say so because these people are crooks. They're trying to mislead the politicians. So who then are the first victims of Climagate? Well, of course, uh, Malcolm Turnbull, leader of the opposition in Australia, has gone, and the ETS scheme that they were trying to get through, emissions trading scheme, that's gone too, because the Senate's just voted it down. Phil Jones has now gone, 